Hello everybody, my name is Mick or Mr. Stormcrow and welcome to the Gaming and Trivia News Show. We got a couple of interesting stuff for you. Turns out we got a Steam sale that's coming out pretty soon. We got the Autumn one and October one for Halloween and uh, we'll give you the specifics on that in a little bit. But before I sort of want to get into that, um, we got some stuff for the channel. So if you didn't know, uh, we've been doing this for a while and uh, we, we wanted to know if you guys could possibly follow our social media because uh, you know, we want to sort of contact with you guys and just communicate overall on what we could do better for the streams from time to time. You know, I think the green screen here is pretty dank. I don't think a lot of people have done this on Twitch. Uh, but you know, the thing is, is we can even make it better with your guys' help. So if you could guys maybe follow us on Instagram, Twitter, uh, all that sort of social media should be below in the link tree. And uh, you should be able to sort of just talk with us and communicate because that's how a platform or a channel is built, right? Through communication. Uh, another thing is we do have merchandising, and I wanna get this uh, right out of the gate because uh, again, I really think these products are pretty awesome. And you know, we gotta start their revenue stream. Hey, we gotta eat some food, okay? <laughs> so uh, one of the things, uh, let me see if I can see it up here. Hopefully it won't interrupt the green screen. Uh, but it's the actual Vaporwave shirt. I actually thought this was pretty awesome. Uh, not only do you get a cool design, but it's pretty comfortable. So let's see if I can hold the shirt up correctly. But um, yeah, this is a thing that I thought was pretty decent. It's pretty cool. You got yourself a little Vaporwave Circle logo, and it's pretty simplistic. It's not too complicated. A lot of shirts these days are complicated, and they really shouldn't. But um, it's pretty comfortable. It doesn't look like cheaply made or anything like that. It's pretty well conversed when it comes to the quality. So I really recommend you guys check it out if you can and we do have those masks as well which uh, are already on the Shopify ready to go if you guys want to purchase those so um, without further ado let's sort of get into the news so one of the things I sort of want to talk about was the autumn sale that's going on from I believe October yeah we are we are in October last I checked yes October 9th to the 13th for the autumn sale um, so this is for independent games, so specifically indie developers. Uh, you know, a lot of the times we see a lot of AAA game studios, but we never really see games that are created by one or two people. Um, and that should be really promoted, I think, because again, we don't want to get into the fiasco. It's kind of like a, a negator to these AAA games to a certain extent, right? With these AAA games being $70 instead of 60, we now have these indie games that are Honestly, surprisingly great. You have Undertale. Minecraft is an indie game, actually. Uh, it was built by Notch, and then you sold it to Microsoft. So, um, yeah, it's really great that um, we have games that counteract the AAA, and hopefully, in a way, it'll stabilize the prices. Because, honestly, I think it's ridiculous that we are still charging people, um, or, well, we're getting into the idea or the mindset mindset of charging $70. Because, again, they're broken games, right? Like, when indie developers have probably maybe maybe they got glitches but it's nothing compared to the absolute craziness of AAA development um, and I understand it is time consuming there's a lot of work experience when it comes to those games but at the same time I don't feel we should be charging people $70 for a broken game um, now of course I'm kind of ranting on that but um, it's really cool that we have a sale that is uh, promoting indie developers people that, well, they need to survive. So um, it's really cool that we're gonna be getting the sale. And also, um, I believe we will be getting an October sale when it comes to just games in general. So if I remember correctly, and I am reading this, uh, it, hopefully this is right, I'm reading it currently from a source from altchar.com. Uh, it says that Halloween sale will be uh, happening October 29th to November 2nd. Typically, the Steam sales on PC, if you don't know, it's pretty much every game. There's at least a discount to a certain extent. Um, I know Black Ops 2, if I remember correctly from the last Steam sale, was about 50% off. So instead of purchasing for $60, you're getting, for, getting it for $30. So if I, if I were you and you want to buy a game, probably get the game when it's the steam sale in this case the october sale which is coming close on october 29th to november 2nd and um yeah as we said again there's the autumn sale but that one's not the one we discussed it's november 25 to december 1st which is another steam sale it's really confusing we got all these sales which one's which but um yeah we have the indie development which is happening right now currently october 9th to the 13th 
Um, if you want to grab a demo, you can actually grab a free one. It's not even like you have to pay, which is really cool if you really want to try one out. Um, but yeah, we have, on top of that, we have an actual autumn sale, which is coming out on November 25th to December 1st. And we have the winter sale, which is December 22nd to January 5th, 2021, which is arguably probably the best sale that you're going to get because typically... It's just the tradition of Christmas, low prices, right? For consumers, they want to sell as much as possible for digitals. Um, so yeah, get your stuff there, I would recommend. But if you want to get a game immediately, it doesn't hurt to get it through probably the Halloween sale, which is happening again, October, October 29th to the 2nd of November, or the autumn sale. Um, mostly they're about the same price range for the discounts, but I would argue that the winter one's a little bit more if you want to wait it out. Um, so that's really cool. I do want to also talk about the PlayStation 5. So if you didn't know, the PlayStation 5 is not going to have backwards compatibility for all games. There's a couple that aren't. Uh, so for example, these games, I, look, no one's heard of these games. <laughs> I'm going to be straight up. But these are the games that are backwards. Um, they're not, well, they're not actually able to do backwards compatibility. Uh, so there's games, there was a game called DWVR, which I believe is a VR game from the PS4 era, I think. Uh, you have Afro Samurai 2 Revenge of Kuma Volume 1, which is a game on on uh, the PS4, which I didn't know, but yeah, that one's not compatible. Um, you got TT Isle of Man Ride on the Edge 2, Just Deal With It is another game. Uh, Shadow Complex Remastered, Robinson The Journey, We Sing, Hitman Go Definite Edition. That one is actually really good um yeah so that actually is a good game but anyways regardless um that is not compatible unfortunately we got shadow win and joe's diner most of these games are probably things that the average gamer has never heard um maybe with the exception of uh hitman go i think i've heard it i think it's a mobile compatible yeah i think it was a mobile game and i guess they made it possible to be on the ps4 so that's interesting but these are the games that aren't compatible and um yeah um it's really interesting that um because technically um i don't know maybe it's me but when a company says they're compatible with every game i feel that it's uh let's just say it's just a lie <laughs> so i even though these games aren't really talked about or even mentioned at all until now um it's still it's still considered a lie it, you know and we want to be um uh, you know, I, I would hope that these companies would be transparent in the things that they do, uh, because again, right, consumers are more potential. There's a more potential for consumers to buy if the companies are more transparent, telling the truth, communication, right? Um, that's what they say. Communication is key, right? If you, you got a wife, right, <laughs> she thinks you're cheating, you got to be sure to talk it out. If you don't, you're screwed and you're getting divorced. The wife is taking the kids. Okay, I can go on and on. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, there wasn't much news, surprisingly, for uh, today. Um, there is, of course, the indie development and I guess this for the compatibility. But um, yeah, I was kind of surprised. Uh, it looks like today is a free news day. I don't know. But um, so without uh, further ado, I think um, we'll get into the actual... Uh, trivia but one thing i do want to actually say um we do have the masks i forgot to show you guys i did show you the t-shirt but we do have the covid masks uh that we uh recently made uh they got the original what's the play logo the question mark so hey if you're at, if you want to be a little spicy with the uh, masks and you want a question mark this is probably the way to go and they're pretty cheap like they're seven dollars like or eight dollars according to our shopify so I mean, it's a good deal. Like, it's it's literally like, I mean, it's not free, but like, um, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of getting there. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, those are sort of the stuff that I want to talk about for RN because, again, at the end of the day, we gotta make revenue. You know. So, anyways, I guess that's it for the news. And uh, yeah, let's just move on to the trivia, shall we? All right. So let's get this up and running if we can. Um, all right, let's see if I can get this quick, but, um, yeah, hopefully you guys are having a great day. I know, I know these days have been stressful for you guys, the COVID situation. It's not, it's, it hasn't been pretty. It has not been pretty, but apparently I am overlaid with this. So let me just fix this really quick. Um, but yeah, yeah, here we go. We got the trivia game. I'm going to start this up really quick. It just turns out I am in the way of it. So I'm going to be fixing that really quickly. Shouldn't take that long. Probably like 10 more seconds. I just got to 
gotta be careful okay computers we're not the they're not the fastest all right so here we go and i think uh yeah we're good we're good we're good um all right so if you are on periscope or if you're off of youtube or the deep web or some platform that we don't know be sure to go on twitch.tv slash what's the play games because again that's your only way of actually interacting with us for twitch and um i just recommend it it's probably your best experience because the quality i believe the playback is first to, to twitch if you really want to get the high quality out of there so uh hey a little technicality if you for incentives of why you want to go to twitch so um but yeah here we go let's uh, let's actually start this off um all right let's uh, start the quiz so uh yeah we got 15 questions we do have 20 but i think for today to keep it short and sweet we got 15 and uh yeah let's go with the first question of what's the play what state does far cry 5 take place in? this might be an easy one for you guys but for the people who don't know it might be a hard one so you got a california uh b montana or c florida honestly i would be you know a lot of the far cry games aren't really um i think most of them have been pretty much at least I think in like a lot of Western uh, like countries, they've never been in a lot of Eastern. It would have been it would have been kind of cool. And I think Far Cry Three did this, but it would have been really cool if maybe like you're in the uh, I don't know like China or like Japan. Like that'd be pretty sweet, you know. Or maybe like in a different time zone because a lot of these Far Cry games are typically a lot like futuristic, right? Um, or like maybe they could make a Far Cry that's like World War Two era. That'd be pretty sick. I'm not gonna lie, that'd be pretty sick. All right, so the answer is B, Montana. Um, I think we had one for Florida. It is not Florida, uh, but it, it's it's close to Far Cry in the real sense. I'm not gonna lie. You got a man eating the face of a some some person while drugged. I, I think it gets pretty close to Far Cry in reality when you think about it. But all right, let's get to the next question here. Okay, so we're on the second one. Look, we don't. It says we got 21, but we're gonna be going for 15 today. So. Uh, in Resident Evil, what's the password for the Red Queen's Chamber? Yeah, so this is a, a thing, like, you know, remember when games actually challenged you and had puzzles? <laughs> and Resident Evil was still kind of like that? Well, yeah, you had to figure out the numbers and figure out what to put in the actual code. So you got a couple of numbers here. You got A, 145982, you got B, 12177, or you got C, 164204. Be sure to put your answers quickly. We only got a couple seconds left, and uh, once the timer goes out, you're done -zo. Uh But yeah, we got one for one, two, one, seven, seven. Interesting. Um, yeah, if I remember correctly, you're right. It's one, two, one, seven, seven. I'm actually a little surprised you guys got that on the first try, considering that like I thought it was a hard question. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess maybe someone guessed it right. <laughs> All right, so. Um, we're on what's the play three out of 21 uh, Who is the first character you play as an in injustice 2 injustice 2 is the typical superhero game But the real question here is who do you play as you play as Superman you play as Batman or you play as flash? Uh, be sure to put in your questions or well not your question your answer is as soon as you can um, In fact, it kind of sucks a lot of them um, a lot of the Man, I don't know if I should say this. People are going to be angry. But a lot of the DC movies have been just utter, like, horribly. Like, they're just horrible. Like, I, I think the newer one with Robert Patterson, Patterson, um, it was going to be the Batman. It looks actually semi-decent. Apparently, it's going to be the Riddler. So, I don't know how that's going to work. But it looks like they're going a little edgier. So, we'll have to see how that works. All right. So, we got uh, C. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, we got B, Batman. B is in Batman. In fact, that's actually kind of interesting that I put B is for Batman because B and B now. Anyways, so yes, Batman was the character he plays in Justice, and I believe Superman was the villain. Yeah, uh, I think it was because there was some problem like the Joker. I think Superman wanted to kill the Joker. Batman's like, no, don't kill the Joker because we're we're uh, we're in a society. And then yeah, that was kind of what happened. So, all right, let's get to the uh, fourth question out of twenty-one. 420 would have been an interesting uh, mix there uh, and Call of Duty Black Ops 2 who is the main character who's playable in the 1980 missions so if you don't know Black Ops 2 
an FPS shooter where you're killing uh, you're killing the bad guys because we're the good guys automatically, and uh, you play as this character, and I believe um, you play different ones. You actually rotate from like the 80s to the 30s or the 40s. Um, funny or no, no, actually 2025. I remember this. In fact, I think the theory is is that we'll maybe get a remaster in 2025. We are approaching the real life counterparts, so it's possible. All right, so we got Alex Mason. That's a possibility. We got Frank Woods. We got Mike Harper, which I believe, um, crap, I can't remember his name, but he's actually voiced by, um, he's in a Marvel. I can't remember his name, but it's, he's got like that typical uh, Texas accent. Oh, man. And I know he was in Black Ops 1, too. I can't think of the name, but it, yeah, they actually ended up putting like some really good actors and actresses in uh, the Call of Duty Black Ops 2. So anyways, so we got Alex Mason. That is the right answer. And uh, let's move on to our next one, which is 5 out of 21. What type of animal is this about the player's personal assistant, Animal, animal Crossing New Leaf? So Animal Crossing is actually pretty good. I first played it when it was on the GameCube, and then um, that was when you're in debt to Tom uh, Nook, and you got to pay off your, your house, and you just constantly get screwed over multiple times, kind of like a counterpart to real life. But... Um, yeah, now they kind of released a, they released a new leaf that was a while back and I, I think the new one's Horizon I believe I've heard generally like the Animal Crossing games are really good typically um, But anyways, uh, you got the, your answers. You got dog cat or raccoon um, Hey, I'm not gonna lie, but if you get this you get this one wrong I don't know what to say. No, I'm just kidding <laughs> But it is dog. It is dog um, and I believe, uh, yeah, no one answered, so I guess no one is in the wrong. But um, yeah, it is dog. Uh, that I didn't know. I thought at first it was a cat or like a raccoon, but it's actually a dog. So the power of art, right? All right, so who is Link's rival? So if you don't know, Link is that, uh, that dude in Nintendo who's got that blade and he's like killing things, right? Majora's Mask is arguably probably the best one, but um, this one... Uh, this question specifically is asking for who is his rival. Uh, you got A Zelda, you got B Godzilla, <laughs> you see, or you got C Ganondorf. Uh, this one is, I would say, it's pretty spot on easy. Like, um, I think most people, even like outside of gaming, probably know this answer, especially like Super Smash Bros. I know that game's been played a lot, but um, yeah, be sure to put in your answer as quick as you can. It is Ganondorf. You are right. It is Ganondorf. Um, Zelda is the one that he's saving, I believe, if I remember correctly. And uh, Godzilla is the one that's not in the game. It's a movie, unless I heard it wasn't great. <laughs> it had Mothra, the latest movie, but other than that, no, nah, it was kind of trash. I mean, you got Brian Cranston. He's pretty good, but that was it. <laughs> that was the only good thing that came out of the Godzilla movies. But anyways, yes, it is Ganondorf. Ganondorf is that dude who uh, who's really bulky and thick and uh, likes hurting Link for no exact reason. All right, so what is the name of the character from the Tomb Raider series? The main one, by the way, we'll hint. Uh, the Tomb Raider series has been pretty much alive since the 90s. It's probably one of the only games that's kind of still alive from the 90s. Because I know EA, now they're not owned by, I know Tomb Raider's not owned by EA, but it's just, it's sad because a lot of the 90s games have been utterly destroyed by EA. You had Medal of Honor, um, Battlefield is arguably kind of destroyed still because like it's never really gotten their online multiplayer to be active that much again from previous launch but um, yeah it, it's kind of unfortunate, unfortunate how we don't have a lot of 90s games that are you know new right because they've kind of been destroyed because apparently you know they don't make much money but if only companies knew how to make the game correctly then they would be making the money am I right guys? Uh, but yeah, it is Laura Croft. Laura Croft is a character from <clears throat> the Tomb Raider series where you are uh, jumping and <laughs> and uh, yeah, you're trying to find artifacts. So yeah, that's that's a thing. All right, so we are on a, our eighth question here at 21. Uh, we'll get through 15, don't worry. It's not going to be too long. <laughs> but when was the first PlayStation made? Ooh, PlayStation 1 had so many great games. You actually had... um. Rapper the rapper that one was pretty fun. That's the one that I like can think oh back to mind when the ps1 first came out You had Parapper the rapper. I think you had like a Deku. I, I think it was called Deku You're like a world and you're just rolling to like essentially destroy everything in a mayhem and while you're destroying you just Keep getting the ball even bigger or something like that. I think it was called Deku or something in Japanese. I think it was called that 
Um, but yeah, there was a lot of great games with PS1. So um, yeah, uh, is it June 2nd, 1995? Is it B, December 3rd, 1994? Or is it C, August 11th, 1996? And it's actually B. It came out December 3rd, uh, 1994. You're close. Uh, but it first came out in 1984, and I actually can't believe it came out because, like, from my memories, I remember it being, like, a 2000s thing. At first, yeah, like, at first I thought, like, the PS1 came out in 2000, maybe 1999, the latest, but, it, yeah, I didn't know. It came out in 1994. I guess it got popularized probably around 2000s because um, I, I do believe we were, like, in an economic disaster <laughs> in the 90s, kind of, um, and that sort of impacted games and how they were being made, but, yeah, that was a thing, so... All right, let's get to our next question. <clears throat> so we are on 9 out of 21. How long did New Vegas make to make? I don't think that makes any sense the way it's typed, but uh, how long did New Vegas take to make? Okay, well, we'll have to, we're going to have to fix that one later. But is it A, 18 months? Is it B, 22 months? Or is it C, 44 months? This was by Obsidian Entertainment. I'd like to, I'd like to, um, by the way, sort of, state that because bethesda they made the latest games and let me tell you they're not so hot you had fallout 76 which made it so that it had their economic system in the game go to ebay where people are selling the digital items for actual money like i, I gotta state like how bad that actually is but it's 18 months it was that quick that's about a year and a half no uh yeah it's about a year and a half actually yeah yeah, so it's a year, year and a half specifically, I think, because 18 minus 6, you got six months. and Yeah, so it's a year and a half. And yeah, it was pretty quick, and it's arguably one of the best games that probably the Fallout franchise ever had uh, ever since Fallout 1 and 2 and supposedly Van Buren, which was the canceled one um, that was supposed to come out, but they never did. And I heard that Van Buren was 94% complete, or at least it was in the 90% range, but they couldn't really do it because the IP was essentially taken from them because I believe they were bankrupt at that time. A lot of game studios are bankrupt. So anyways, yeah, I found that really interesting. And of course they didn't get the bonus because it was a 74 instead of a 75. And then of course Obsidian got bankrupt almost by Bethesda, but I guess it's okay because they're now bought by Microsoft. So <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's not gonna be any, uh, I don't know, heated uh, discussions maybe later with their uh, company and their PR, but anyways, uh, we we have one here. It's uh, you are stuck in a house while many zombies are approaching. What do you do? Do you a lock yourself in the basement like in that movie? Uh, what was it called by George A. Romero? Uh, I think it was the oh my god. I can't remember Night of the Living Dead Night of the Living Dead. Thank you uh, It was Night of the Living Dead kind of like that one or you grab a weapon to defend or you just run All of these answers are technically right, but there's one that I'm like a little iffy on because uh, technically zombies like once you I mean once you run they're always gonna kind of like go after you right so this one's gonna be a or b because in night of the living dead he locks the basement the main character he pretty much survives the whole night <laughs> with the massive hordes of zombies just like coming his way apparently that door is just indestructible I, I guess they are when they're in the basement right they gotta be because I guess the basement basements are I don't know they're highly uh cold sometimes right um, but you could also be grab a weapon and defend but your problem then you know And I'll give you guys the pass on that one is it makes noises the guns do make noise unless you got a silencer So and then even if you do that a zombie from a mile away could probably hear you right or a person could hear you And then you got a problem too if a person hears you and they want to take your stuff So that's a, it's a little problematic if you ask me But it is a and B which is lock yourself in the basement and grab a weapon and it, it technically could be just wrong, but I, I mean, I don't think that'd really work. All right, so we are on 11 out of 21. And uh, this one is, who is the main villain for Borderlands 2? So Borderlands 2 was that game came out around, I think, 2010 era, around there. Um, and then um, it was pretty fun. It was a looter shooter. That's all it was. And uh, depending on how many enemies you killed and your percentage went up, uh, you would actually get like a mythic or a, not a mythic, but like a rare drop or like a purple or a green uncommon, right? Um, so it was pretty cool. It's like an RPG shooter essentially uh, And it was pretty fun because uh, for the most part you never really wanted to stop because you wanted to get the best weapon or the best equipment the best shield uh, So yeah, uh, but yeah, be sure to put in your answer as quick as you can uh, You got handsome jacket the elusive man or Kerrigan 
Um, I I think one of them right out of the gate is not it, but it is Handsome Jack. Yeah, I don't think it's Kerrigan. That is a that's a woman's name actually. Uh, be the elusive man. Yeah, it could be, but that's Mass Effect. So Kerrigan is actually from uh, World of Warcraft. No, no, Starcraft. Starcraft. Yeah, I came from Starcraft. So, yep. All right. So let's get on to our. I don't know if it was Starcraft. It might have been the other series that Blizzard had at the moment. I might be. Oof. Anyways, <laughs> what was so Sony's first handheld device? Is it A the DS, B the PSP? Or is it C, the Game Boy Color? Uh, be sure to bring your answer as quick as you can. This one's an easy one. I, I mean, if you're a real gamer and you know your game pretty well, this one's an easy one. It's not hard at all. Uh, but I just wanted to put it in there because, again, I love the PSP. It's probably one of the best devices that we've ever, ha ever had for a handhold, but they just destroyed it. <laughs> and they released the PSP uh, Vita, which was like, why? The interface is horrible, so... I don't know, and you kind of think that in the Switch would maybe do that, like maybe the Switch could replace it, because I would assume it's not that hard to use MP4s, right, or like MP3s, but I, I don't know, man. At this point, I, I, I don't know what Nintendo is trying to do or all these game companies, I just wish things were simpler, but unfortunately we're not living in that world anymore. So it is BSB, B, uh, and yeah, that's our question. Um, so we're on our 13th one. <clears throat> which Fallout game enables the player to speak rather than written dialogue in the previous generations? So is it A, Fallout 4? Is it B, New Vegas or Fallout 3? This was one of the major complaints about the newer games of Fallout. You now have a protagonist that talks with a voice actor or a voice actress. And because of this, you're not really immersed. Your actions are not done by you at this point. They're done by another character with a voice. If that makes sense. This is why a lot of people loved the written dialogue. There was a lot more options instead of just having four, because I guess it takes a lot of effort to record dialogue, I would assume. Well, now with the text, you know, if you had text, it would be a lot easier, right? You could make six or seven or eight, which I believe New Vegas did, which was really awesome. But um, yeah, the answer is Fallout 4. I, I, oh man, I, I mean, the game's fun for the gameplay, but it's just, it's horrible for like the story and like the dialogue choices. Everything, every choice you make doesn't even feel like a choice. It feels like a chore, essentially. So, anyways, I do want to get into the scoreboard right now um, because, again, I think uh, we actually have someone who might be, uh, who might be killing it with the, yeah, with the score. So, the Who Cares podcast is number one. You guys got to step up your game, man. I'm just saying, like, all right. Well, anyways, that is our top players. Let's get on to our next question on our 14th, I believe. 14th, yes, the 14th. And uh, when was the first ever Counter-Strike game released? You have A, 2001. You got B, 2000. Or you have C, 1999. So there are a couple of Counter-Strike games. Um, I'm talking about the first one for clarification, by the way. I believe there's Counter Strike and then there's Counter Strike uh, Off. No, not Offense. Counter Strike Source and then Counter Strike Offense, I believe. There's there's three versions, I believe, or there is at least four, but I'm talking about the first one that ever came out. Uh, all right, so you have 2001, B2000, or C 1999. Be sure to pick your answers as quick as you can. All righty, so. The play would be, I believe it would be 1999 if I remember correctly, or no, it's 2000. I guess I can't remember everything as much as I'd like to. Uh, but yeah, Counter-Strike, uh, I believe from the 2000s, is like the same maps as today. The only difference is the remasters, actually. Um, it's pretty cool. You know, game from the 19, well, not the 1990s, but 2000 is still doing pretty well to this day, actually. Um, it's pretty healthy. I guess it's the competitive format, which allows players to really uh, sort of express themselves, right? Maybe it's that, maybe the communication, stuff like that. But anyways, yeah, it's still successful to this day. Counter-Strike Go, too, or CSGO, right? So, um, but yeah, which Pokemon was created first by Game Freak? Is it a right on Is it B, a Meowth? That's right. Or is it C, Ekans? Yeah, be sure to bring your answers. Uh, I was kind of surprised by this as well when I was learning this, but yeah, it's, um, it's one of these, and I don't think you would expect it either. Like... Yeah, like you would kind of think, oh, it has to be Bulbasaur because like the Pokedex entry is from one to like 151, right? Well, it turns out that um they didn't really start with one. They started with like 50 and then they started to like one. And by the way, 50 is not the answer. I just picked a placeholder. But yeah, it could be like 50 they worked on and then one. So it looks like they might have like jumped around with like the Pokemon. That's really interesting. So 
Um, that's definitely something I didn't know, but it is right on. It is right on. Um, and yeah, they started with right on. That was the first, uh, that was actually the first Pokemon that they actually, um, made. I think it's, uh, it makes sense because I believe in the intro for Pokemon Red and Blue for the, the, the original Game Boy for Red and Blue, I think they do display right on as sort of the, uh, character for like the screen. Um, for when I think Red's there and a couple other Pokemon, but like Red on sort of the main attraction, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I played Red and Blue, but um, it does make sense when you think about it. So, all right, I think uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. We are done with the quiz. Um, we just have these just in case if anybody wants to play. But um, yeah, these are these are um, extra questions, and I I think we're done. So. Um, yeah, today was uh, very interesting. There wasn't much news this week. Um, we kind of went over the major ones around a couple of days ago, right? Because that was when AMD released their pro product, uh, sorry, product launch for the actual consoles and stuff. So um, yeah, I think uh, today was interesting. If you guys didn't know, if you guys are still, um, I don't know, new here. Um, yeah, uh, again, uh, one of the things um, we sort of talked about today was the fact that Steam sales coming up pretty quickly on October 9th. Or not October 9th. Or actually, October 9th or 13th. Those are for the free indie games. And then I believe October 28th to the 2nd of November is the Steam sale for discounts on everything. Um, you can get free demos for the one that's going on right now if you want to get in there. Uh, it's really cool. Again, we got to support our, you know, small business owners. I mean, that's that's what it is at the end of the day. These indie developers, they don't, they can't survive, <laughs> especially during COVID. So I think it's our, I don't know, it's not responsibility, but I think we should incentivize this because again, if you want to, hey, if you want games to be really fun, then you're providing competition for the big corporate ones if you support the indie developers. And it's been shown. Right, Undertale, as much as people meme about it of how it's a really horrible game, in fact, it probably has one of the best decisions when it comes to a video game. It has so many choices. And again, corporate games can't even produce that even though when they have three years down the line. So um, again, these games have a lot of passion. Be sure to support them if you can. I mean, it's just a given. We kind of have to do it in a way, like especially these times with the disease, it's random muck and, you know, we're not allowed to do anything, right? So you might as well get a game because you got to have to spend some time on the computer anyways. So anyways, that's going to be it. Uh, my name is Mick or Mr. Stormcrow. You can always find me on twitch.tv slash Mr. Stormcrow. Again, check out our platform, social media. Um, and also we will have some uh, podcasts coming away. We have the Bad for America one that's coming out soon. Uh, by Anthony, our uh, host, and also I believe Steven is kind of making his own, but he still has to figure out through time and time, because um, he's got a brainstorm, so um, be sure to watch out on that. Um, again, it is kind of troubling how there's, you know, eh, look, I know it may be kind of stupid because from your point of view, because like, there's only one show, but we're working on it, okay? We got a chalk fundraiser coming up, okay? We're helping the kids. If you don't like that, I, hey, you're a masochist, and we're trying something, so... <laughs> But yeah, also another thing is um, we are uh, wanting some streamers. So um, if you want, um, because we're having chalk coming up, right? If you guys want to, hey, maybe you could collaborate with us. Uh, we're looking for some streamers. And um, if you're maybe new and you don't know how to stream, right? If you don't even have Twitch, we'll actually help you out. We got a Twitch affiliate code, um, or not a code, but like a link that we can send you and you could stream off of your OBS. And uh, yeah, we'll just have tons of fun. Uh, it'll be a 24, I believe it's 24 hours, right, Steven? Okay, yeah, it's 24 hours, and uh, we're going to have people on the line, you know, for the kids helping out with, you know, because, again, you know, kids need our help, right? Especially in times like this where there's diseases like cancer, um, COVID, right? Or, uh, you know, people that are, like, kids being paralyzed. Like, that's, that's a thing that's still happening to this day. Or people, or kids, <laughs> as sad as it sounds, you know, without certain limbs, so, um, or need surgery, right? So, um, we are in a different world than probably what we would have expected from probably 10 years ago so um yeah yeah if you guys want to check that out i don't know um we're i think we're thinking about probably coming out in october october 30th around there probably um so be sure to look out on that we'll announce it on twitter instagram all of our social media so be sure to follow on that if you can um and we're gonna have a great fucking time okay we're gonna have a great time so be sure to look on look on that and uh yeah we'll see you guys later uh that's it for the show for the trivia and the gaming news podcast and uh yeah i hope you guys have a great day it's uh i know it's horrible during these times but i know you guys can get through it so that's gonna be it uh thank you again my name is mr stormcrow mick and